Welcome to the Herga Gymnasium for today's exclusive coverage of Braintree Varsity Basketball as your Braintree Womps take on the Wellesley Raiders. I'm Mike Wassell today, joined by Jeff Poster and Jeff Braintree 5-4. and four. They've won all their home games this season. They've struggled on the road. you got a home game here today against a 4-6 and six Wellesley team. What kind of things does Braintree need to do better than they did here at home versus what they do on the road? Well, their last home game against Weymouth was pretty much a clinic in what they needed to do well. They attacked the basket, they drew fouls, they got contributions from literally the entire roster as head coach Bob Crook was able to get his second and third units in there at the end of the game, and even they were putting up points against the Wildcats. So if you can do more of the same against the Wellesley team coming in at 4-7 and seven and just 1-5 and five out of the Hergett side of the Bay State Conference, should be in store for a good night for the Wamps, but... That's why they play the game. We have to uh, see what happens first. Yeah, tough loss for Braintree against one of the best teams in all of Massachusetts, the number six seeded Tigers of Newton North. Seems to be a rival of Braintree of the past few years. They've met with them in the postseason and have been knocked out the last couple seasons by that team. But here today against Wellesley, a team that's struggling to find their identity. We'll take a quick break now as we see the starting lineup. I'll give you the names as well. And is the starting guard for the Raiders. Jack Mullion. Number five, a guard. Stuart Battersheader. Tim Ray, number 11, one of the captains. And uh, rounded out, Jeff Gilbert, one of the forwards for Wellesley. Head coach, Mike Wrighty. And now for your Braintree Womps. To start things off, it's Marquise Jones. Tom Reddington manning the point, the captain of this Braintree team as Nick Timberlake, the sharpshooter. Number 23 is Zeskis. And then to round it out, Mike Mahoney at center. Braintree coach by Bob Crook, assisted by Jeff Timberlake, and the team manager, Brian Kelly. Now pause for the national anthem. Welcome back to Braintree High School, start of the first quarter. Braintree and Wellesley going head-to-head, -head, the 5-4 and four Womps versus the 4-6 and six Wellesley Raiders. Mahoney will jump this one up for the Womps, and he'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jeff Gilbert to start things here in the first quarter. Braintree in their home white uniforms with the blue trim. And again, Braintree has won every home game but they've really struggled on the road. The last game against Newton North, a tough one for Braintree. They were actually winning that one, but they got in foul trouble and then fell behind in the third quarter, and that was pretty much the end of it. As Marquise Jones takes the first shot of the game, it's short, and Braintree with an offensive rebound. It's Zeskis, and he throws it away. Jeff Gilbert with the opening steal here with 7.35 to go in the first quarter. And Jeff, it's a good start for Braintree with the crash on the boards, but Kind of a lackluster pass, and now Wellesley with the chance. Yeah, Zeskis was a nice hustle play to go and get that offensive board. Came from the other side of the court, but settled down. You had a fresh clock. You didn't need to rush that one. That's why 
Gilbert was able to take it away from you. Driving inside, nice active hands by Timberlake. He gets it ahead to Reddington. Reddington up with the left hand, and he kisses it home off the glass. First two points of the game come from the senior captain, Tom Reddington. Well, Timberlake returning the favor, and right now away with the full court press. Timberlake gambling. Not too sure about call. that foul, yeah. yeah. Had the opportunity to speak with assistant coach Jeff Timberlake, and he was mentioning that it was kind of really refereed tightly against Newton North, and that really doesn't play in Braintree's favor because they had most of their starters in foul trouble in the first half, and that's a pretty weak call, as you said, against Timberlake to open this one up, but Braintree with a 2 nothing advantage as well as he moves the ball on he's, the Braintree side. He's the one guy you don't want to get in big foul trouble early. Go-to score, leader offensively. Nice defense, Mahoney with the block. <laughs> Mike Mahoney just absolutely bigger than the driving Tim Ray. Didn't even have to jump there. No. He extended his arms, and at that point, he's over seven feet. What the arms extended. Inside to Mahoney. Mahoney going one-on-one -on -one with he Ray. He his length there, too. Didn't have position, but his arms let him get in position. Zeskis again with the offensive rebound. Can't put it home, and now we're going to have a, a tie-up. No, they're going to call Jones for the foul now. No, never mind. It's going to be Mahoney. Both Jones and Mahoney were there, and it looked like it was going to be a tie-up. Instead, we have the second personal foul against Braintree. So Mahoney with one and Timberlake with one as Branchy comes out into the full court press. It gave Weymouth fits for sure in the last home contest. And that was one Branchy had handily at halftime. That one thrown out of bounds. And Branchy ball. That one off the foot of number 10, Stuart Battersher. So Reddington sets things up, manning the point. The only basket right now for Braintree with 5.45 to go in the opening quarter. Braintree's had plenty of opportunities, a pair of offensive rebounds, just two points to show. Reddington swings it to the corner for Jones. Jones back to the top of the key for Reddington. Ball fake inside to Mahoney. It's bobbled, and there's the first foul against Wellesley for the grab. Seems to be a little bit stationary on both sides. Not much cuts towards the basket. As Timberlake looks to work it inside. Now Zeskis cuts inside, gets it underneath to Mahoney. Nice pass and up with the left hand. 4-2. Nice move by Zeskis. The bounce pass along the baseline. And Mahoney, when he started this game, he could have a feast both sides of the ball with his size. And we talked before the game that Wellesley themselves has a couple of guys that got some decent size of their own. Jeff Gilbert, who started not too much smaller than Mike Mahoney. It's long arms, too. Right now, it's Mahoney that's had the advantage. Wellesley on the prior possession with another turnover. Nice pass inside to Timberlake, upstairs and for two. <laughs> nice pass from Mahoney. Mahoney threw it over everybody, and Timberlake with that great cut around the free throw line and to the right. Went right up with the pass and the shot. Now so, Oop style. Pretty assist and a 10 second violation against Wellesley in the backcourt. Wow, that's not a call you see every no, day. That's just a mental mistake. You're just dribbling and dribbling and dribbling. And Timberlake, I believe, defensively gave you plenty of space. Good look from the outside for Timberlake, a little short. And Zeskis wasn't able to corral it. Again, good hustle by Zeskis. That was his opportunity for his third offensive rebound of this quarter. Yeah, he's had good footwork, good positioning, and hustle play so far. Very good judgment off of the rim. He has a good idea where it's going to land. and Something you can't really teach, just kind of instinct. This time, the Raiders able to get it over midcourt. Lobbed inside. Defended again well by Braintree. Wellesley hasn't really had any good looks at the basket, and that one's turned over. Five turnovers already here in this first quarter as Jones takes the steal. Another steal for Braintree. Like you said, they've done a great job defensively. Wellesley hardly even gotten a shot off. Wow, a lot of contact on the drive from Timberlake. No call. And back the other way come the Raiders. A 
Well, he's still looking for the first points of the game. We're just 3.45 to go here in this first quarter in a very low scoring quarter. Just six points scored all by Braintree. Six seconds on the shot clock and nothing really doing on the offensive side for Wellesley. Long three from Gilbert and it's short, easy rebound for Timberlake. And here comes Braintree. Reddington with a lot of space. Nice pass inside, Mahoney, Ooh. and he's blocked. Not a clean block, though. It was Alex Barron coming over. Finally contest Mahoney, but a great pass from Reddington. And the big man, Mahoney, running the floor. We get rewarded with a couple of free throws. Certainly got a piece of the ball, but he also got the arm. And the first free throws of the game as Mahoney steps to the line. First free throw, and he gets the roll. Three points so far for Mahoney as Braintree gets their first subs into the game. Carnes and Conboy come in as Reddington and Timberlake take a seat. Well, I think Marco Carnes definitely earned some more playing time after the way he finished out the game against Weymouth. Did not score a lot. A lot of his shots just wouldn't fall. But he did a great job moving the ball and playing some solid defense in the latter stages of that game against Weymouth. Also, as well as Kakoras. Kakoras had a, just about a double-double in that Almost. second half. And now a five-second violation against Wellesley. This is unheard of. Some of these whistles that we've seen, the right call, but, I mean, you just don't see it. No points to show for with 3.05 to go here in this first quarter for Wellesley. And seven turnovers already here in this quarter. Womps looking to extend their lead. As Costello now into the game. Costello back outside Carnes. He'll take it. And he won't get the roll. Inside. Nice rebound, Jones. Jones to the basket. Can't finish. And it's taken away again by Braintree. Scramble for the ball, and Jones jumps on top. What's the call? Got to be a Wellesley ball. Just an out of bounds there. A lot of people diving all over the court. Dutcher also into the game. He played well against Weymouth. I remember he had a lot of steals in that game. Defensive intensity has really played a big part in this first quarter. Substitution is now on both sides. First time of the game for Will Jackowitz back out to the perimeter. As driving to the basket is Barron. The shot no good. Rebound by Jones. And Jones is tied up. A little extra there after. Wellesley Bench appreciates it. Bob Crook not too happy. It's taking these referees quite a bit of time to make that jump ball call. He doesn't want to see any of his players get injured. He's wrestling all the way to the ground for the ball. And to make matters even worse, it's going to be a Wellesley ball off of the tie-up. Should have been a foul. The foul was initially there, and then they let, they're letting them play. So we've seen four fouls, two on each side. Conboy nearly able to take that one away. And Wellesley, again, out. right now having the case of fumbleitis. That's the third time the ball's gone right through their hands and out of bounds. They're making a lot of mental mistakes here early. And that's never a good recipe for a win, digging yourself into a hole with just turnovers, especially in early in the first. Good defense by Jackowitz, able to block the shot from Jones. The Ugh. floater won't go, and Costello has the rebound. Nothing will drop here in this quarter for the Raiders. Conboy inside to Jones. Jones reversing, and he got fouled. Jones can't believe he missed it. But he'll go to the free throw line for Braintree's third and fourth attempt of this first quarter. Right the second personal on Alex Barron, too. So coming off the bench... Picking up two personal fouls. It's not going to be long for this game if he keeps it up. Right now, it doesn't matter who Wellesley puts in the game. They can't find anybody to score. As Jones swishes the first. And it's not as if Braintree is lighting it up offensively either. They've only managed eight points here with this second free throw coming up for Jones. And we've only got a minute 45 left to go in the quarter. Keep it at eight. He's right. another guy with that size, though, for Wellesley. Jackowitz, three rebounds off the bench already. So Branchy two for four at the line. And the foul is going to be on Dutcher. 
You like the aggressive nature that Braintree has brought here in this first quarter. That's the second time we've seen kind of a tic-tac call as now Dutcher takes it away, which it's is what he was. Card. Yeah, pretty much. Good hands and good anticipation out in the court. Zeskis nearly throws it away and a foul. That one on Weisel. One thirty-two to go in the first quarter. Eight nothing Braintree. Conboy sends it across to Zeskis. Zeskis doubled in the corner. Now up top to Carnes. Carnes had the shot, didn't take it. Dutcher will. Three is long, and the rebound is taken down by Wellesley. Now to the corner. A good look, and finally the first points of the game for Wellesley comes from the outside. Ryan from Murray. number 44, Ryan Murray. Took him long enough. Almost just down to a minute left to go, but I guess if you're going to score that late, you might as well make it a three. Convoy fakes it, had the shot. Now Costello fakes, swings at the perimeter. Opposite side this time for Dutcher, who's way off. Rebound taken down by Convoy, and a pretty finish at the rim. Back up and in, didn't put the ball down, nothing. Just went right up to the basket. Good move. Carnes whistle to the foul, 10 to three the score. 39.8 to go here in the first quarter. Four fouls on each side here in this opening quarter. Wellesley having trouble getting the ball in and very close to backcourt. His toes, his back heel is pretty much on the line, very close. Could have gone to the backcourt if he wanted to, but they didn't Good elect that way. Here from the Wolves. Close to the five second again. We saw it once, very nearly again. Final 20 seconds. But an eight second differential between the shot and the game clock. Uh, Foul before the travel. And that with just six seconds left to go on the shot clock too. Like that is, that's the worst kind of foul you can give up. Shot clock winding down, you played excellent defense. Almost had a turnover. Right. You bail them out with the personal foul. Now they get the ball, probably for the last shot of the quarter. 14.8 to go. And a loose ball. This time it's gotta be called a tie up and it'll be Braintree's ball for the final 10.6. Let's see if Coach Crook tries to get anybody back in. And Mahoney will. Timberlake came in in the last whistle, so you've got definitely a big opportunity here to get some points back. Wellesley going to bring some pressure in the backcourt. First time in the game for Dean Simpson. Convoy here in the final 10. Gets it across, half court, now throws it to Costello. Costello looking for the cutting Timberlake back to the top of the key for Zeskis. Two to seconds left, they're not going to get a shot off. And that's how the first quarter ends. 10 to three the score after one quarter. Just one three-pointer made in that quarter for the Raiders, but Braintree with 10 points, with all the turnovers that Wellesley had, just a seven point lead, probably not what you were looking for if you're Braintree, but yeah. uh, at home, a seven point lead after a quarter, you'll take it. You take it, but you can see if you look down at Coach Crook, he doesn't seem too happy with the way that his team finished off that first quarter. You had an opportunity. Wellesley didn't score until almost a minute was left. It could be up 15, 20 at this point. And instead, it's just 10 to three, but Womps can clean up their offense. They should be in store for a good win. We'll take a break in between quarters. As Branchy leads 10 to 3 after 1, we'll be back for the second quarter. You might feel like there's too many problems in the world or that, you know, you as a 15-year-old, 16-year-old can't really make a difference. It's not always about you. It's not just one person. It's, it's a group. It's a team. If we all show up together, that's what it's all about. I was a part of helping to build what it is today. I'm really lucky to get to be a part of that legacy. Just that simple act that takes, you know, five or ten minutes of your time is making a difference and is transforming someone else's life. Once you get there and realize how much you can change someone's life, it's one of the best feelings in the world. I'd do anything to convince you just to be a part of this. You guys keep doing what you're doing. It's something special. 
get up and try something. Just try it. Just go, just go to one event, one action team event. It'll just make you feel so good about yourself. Welcome back to the Herc Gymnasium for the second quarter. 10 to 3 the score with Braintree on top. Mike Wassel and Jeff Poster on hand here for BCAM TV. And Jeff, the way you want to start if you Braintree with the lead, but it wasn't very fluid in that first quarter. No, and they definitely have some room to improve and some things to clean up themselves. They played excellent defense. Wow, look at that. <laughs> just Mahoney right just literally wrestled that one away. And a travel. Another turnover. We've seen every call in the book here in this first half. So back-to-back -back steals is the way that one's going to end up. And then a turnover. But Mahoney, again, just using his long arms. Costello back up top for Conboy, trying to set up a play. Mom's well, got to settle down here a little bit. They're a little out of sorts, a little wild. It's long passes. Let's see if they can get a play set up. Timberlake with a good look, and now he goes inside of Costello. Goes to the fadeaway, tough shot, and he oh, makes it. Nice move. shot. Brian Costello took one bounce, was able to reposition on the post-up move, and then his fadeaway jumper. That is not an easy no. shot. Anytime you're going away from the basket, it makes it a tougher shot. And another block by Mahoney. That might have hit off the side of the backboard as well. Give him the hometown call, the block shot. He's got Mahoney two Mahoney back outside looking for the assist. Seskis won't take it. He drives inside, pretty cut to the basket, oh. and he can't get the roll. Yeah, a finger roll there from Zeskis. Good way to cut through the defense and get up to the rim. Outside shot, no good. Mahoney with another rebound. Just the only shot of the game made for Wellesley was an outside three. Like you said, with just about a minute left in the first quarter. 6.40 to go here in the second. 12 to 3 the lead. Brantry looking to go up by double digits. Mahoney work here. Almost tied up. You've got to be careful. You don't want to hold that one in the paint. Get the three-second call. Timberlake to the basket, lost it, and it was knocked out. Green block, Timberlake and Mahoney both trying to fight through crowds. Wellesley's done a decent job clamping down the paint underneath the basket. Has not been easy. Brinker's gotten a few there, but I think the go-to guy has got to be Mike Mahoney right now. He's had his way with this Wellesley team, both offensively and defensively. Here we Lobbed go. inside to Mahoney, can't finish this time, and this time the second chance he will with the left hand. Right on cue. The go-to guy here in this first half. Five points for Mahoney. Inbounds play under the basket. Mosley just cannot hold on to the ball. Granted, that was deflected, but still. Mahoney having a heck of a first half. He's been all over the glass, had a pair of blocks. A couple steals. Spreading around on the stat sheet. This time he's called for the foul. Went straight up, but he got him with the body. And that's going to be the second against Mahoney. Here with 6.04 to go. I wonder how long he's going to be on the court. And I think that answers your question. Here comes Costello. First free throw, no good. So Mahoney's going to take a seat on the bench with five points. Costello comes in, hit a sweet fadeaway earlier in this quarter. It's the nice thing about this Braintree team is they pretty much sub in very constantly so all these players are fresh and ready to go and they're ready for their number to be called and when they are, Braintree rolls out just about close to 10 players a game. Even more if, if the game gets out of hand. Nice cross court pass, Costello had the shot, won't take it. Reddington with the shot fake, nice pass inside and Zeskis can't finish. Braintree with another missed opportunity. And back the other way, Wellesley gives it right back. They can't finish the lay layup on their own. Timberlake can elevate. His chin's ready to hit the rim as you saw him go up for that rebound. Nice bounce pass inside Zeskis, and Zeskis throws it away. And a travel against Wellesley. Right now, the Raiders just can't do anything right here in this first half. Jake Zeskis having a tough time after couple of offensive rebounds to start off the game. Came out hustling. And so a couple of mental mistakes. Missed some good looks at the rim. And now throwing it away. Luckily, Braintree gets it back off another Wellesley turnover. Ten-point lead for the Womps. Look at that catch by Timberlake. Goes to the fadeaway. No good. That was a tough shot. 
was trying to draw the contact, I think. Didn't get it, though. Back to the perimeter. And now the cut to the basket. And the nice finish with the left hand as Moen gets his first two. Yeah, senior captain with his back to the basket. Aggressively moving. 14 to 6. That's way short. I think that might, might have been, been blocked. blocked yeah. That was a piece. Gilbert got a piece of that one. Timberlake doesn't usually miss like that. No. Inside. Good cut in, another block, but Costello got called for the body. So Braintree's big men in some sort of foul trouble here. That's a second. That's two on Costello and two on Mahoney. And Branch is going to take a timeout with 4.35 to go here in the second. We'll see if Coach Crook makes a couple of adjustments here and maybe tries to go small or what we see in early playing time here from Kokoris. That's, that's what I'm thinking. Came off the bench, played well against Weymouth. And he might just go small. Looks like as of now, based on who's sitting down on the bench. It looks like Costello's gonna stay in the game. And out of the timeout, it looks like it'll be Zeskis, Jones, Costello, Reddington, and Timberlake. But that could all change. But that is gonna be the five that come out in the court. So two fouls for Costello. You get five at the high school level. Certainly if he picked up a third here, he'd come out, but I don't think Branchy wants to go too deep right now. They're up by eight points, but as poorly as well as he's played, Branchy hasn't been able to put this one away, which is what they've been able to do in their last couple home games against Dedham and Weymouth. They were up big time at the end of two quarters of play, and they didn't even see any of their starters in the fourth quarter in either game. First free throw again is no good. Neither team shooting the ball well from the field, from the free throw line, from the outside. One or two from the line. Grinchu's really letting Weymouth hang around. And there comes Costello. He was there to rebound, but they are going to go small as Comboy comes back in. Grinchu should be looking to run now as Reddington walks it up the floor. Here we go. Reddington calling a play. Has Timberlake. Timberlake cutting to the basket and can't get the roll. Jones with the rebound. And Wellesley able to come down with it. Back yeah. the other way. It's not the first time that's happened tonight where we've seen a Rain Tree player go up, get the rebound, and then the contest underneath, they immediately lose it. But Wellesley hasn't done much else at the other end as they just travel again. Already 10 turnovers in the game for Wellesley here in this first half. We've seen travels, backcourts, five seconds, 10 seconds. A little bit of everything. Yeah. Jones to the basket and he got fouled. Clear cut foul as Jones got raked across the arm. Marquise just one point so far here in this first half. He's one for two from the line. And he gets a very kind roll. Things are going your way. They bounce off pretty close to the top of the backboard. Came right into the basket. And checking in for the first time is Brennan Quigley, the only player for Braintree who didn't dress in that game against Weymouth, getting his first action here in this first half. So Jones, two for two at the line. Three points in all. And Reddington nearly knocks it away and creates the steal. Wellesley will inbound again. Braintree again, all over this press. That time, Wellesley able to break it pretty easily. And the foul from behind by Quigley. Not the way you want to come into a game. It's your first action in a little while, and immediately give up a foul. And the bonus, too, is Wellesley. 3.54 to go in the second. A nine-point lead for the Womps, and a one-on-one, -on -one, and the first shot is good. 
Weisel with his first point. And his second. The closest Wellesley fan in a while is seven. Hanging around, they're getting to the free throw line too. Frenchy looking to go back up by double digits. The outside look from Reddington, it was halfway down, it wouldn't stay. Not falling tonight, an outside shot. Good defense by Quigley, keeps his position. Three and a half to go, looking for the paint. As you hear, head coach Ridey calling for the play inside. Good look from the perimeter, the shot's no good. Good contest by Convoy, the pass inside. Jones fights on the first fake and comes down with the rebound out to jump ball. And it's going to be Branchy Ball. Both referees pointing different directions. Now they're going to confer. And now they're going to, looks like they're going to overrule it. Yep, it's going to be Branchy Ball. No? Well, now it is. <laughs> Took about four tries before they got the right player there to inbound it. Must have been the head official at midcourt because he was the one pretty much saying it's Branchy Ball and the official down low was saying no it's Wellesley's they have a possession arrow for a reason I'm not really <laughs> sure how they got that one screwed up outside Convoy good look it won't stay down and Timberlake was held from behind by Weisel very sloppy first half here just like you said nothing dropping turnovers Missed opportunities. Lots of fouls. Lots of fouls. Jones to the basket, and there's another one. And one for Jones. As he now ties Mahoney with five points, looking for his sixth at the line, and looking to give Braintree the 10-point advantage. Very low scoring first half. This isn't the way Braintree usually plays. They usually score in the upper 50s, sometimes in the 60s. Score, we saw them score close to 80 points in that last game against Weymouth. They were averaging oh, almost 20 points. Yeah, they were averaging 20, 20 points a quarter. Uh, Wayne, uh, Wellesley's giving them every opportunity to do that as another travel. They've been very careless with their mental mistakes and protecting the ball. Braintree has definitely had more possessions than Wellesley. So the lowest output this season for Braintree offensively was 28 points in the loss to Needham. And their biggest output was 79 in the game we saw against Weymouth here at home. Inside, and the scoop shot is good from Dutcher. Hung in the air and finally got it to fall. Oh, almost steal. So Dutcher with his first basket of the game and Braintree up by 11. see some of the Braintree youth basketball players getting ready to warm up. It's Braintree youth basketball night here and they'll come on the court at halftime. And right now they're watching their team play an 11 point lead for the Womps. Six steals now for Braintree in this half. Jones going back to the line. Well, at least Wellesley's spreading the fouls out. Three different players with two, and then Battisher and Gilbert each have one. First free throw from Jones is perfect, and for the first time into the game is John Bone for Reddington. Reddington pretty much playing this entire first half. A couple points for Reddington, a couple steals as Jones now with seven. Perfect from the line that time, and almost another steal here in the backcourt. Not much there on that foul as Bowen whistled for the foul, and that'll put Wellesley at the line. Still a one-on-one -on -one situation. The next one will be a two-shot foul. Free throw is good. Bowen now with his third point of the game. One of the co-captains. 
as Weisel comes out and Simpson comes on. Owen hits them both. One forty to go here in the opening half. Dutcher goes to the basket. Ooh. Hesitation shot, no good, and he gets his own rebound. Has Timberlake wide open, nice pass. And Timberlake's gonna go to the line. He was looking for the slam. It's probably a good foul by Wellesley that time. Make him earn it, at least. Haven't seen Timberlake really get his game going. There's been so many fouls, so many turnovers. Just two points for Timberlake, now his third. He was all over the score sheet in the last game against Weymouth. He had 18 and he, points before halftime. Yeah, all of that in the first half. I think he only scored three points in the second half. Didn't need to score Didn't more. play yeah. at all in the fourth quarter. So four points for Timberlake. 24 to 11 the score. Timberlake with the active hands and he knocks it out of bounds. Well, they've called this one tight. I wouldn't be surprised if they called that one a foul. Good work by Conboy. Almost yeah, deflects that one away. On it. Yeah. Nothing's been easy here in this first half for Wellesley. Cut inside. Bone with good defense. Now to the outside. Good look. From the outside, it's good. Second three-pointer made from Murray. Well, That's Murray. what he does. Must be a specialist there from beyond. Has a weird release. He almost moves his feet before he takes the shot as this one's pinned up against the backboard. Jones with the second chance, puts it home. Second and third chance, it looked like. He made a nice drive to the basket. Like I said, nothing easy for them. Marquise Jones having a heck of a first half. Nine points for Marquise. Along with six rebounds. Final 30 seconds and another foul. Won't matter if it's on the floor or not, it's gonna be two. Closing in on halftime. Barring an offensive rebound here, Franchu will be able to hold for the final shot. First free throws long. See Wellesley starting to put in some of their deeper bench. Max Wilrich just checked in. He doesn't want Coach Reedy doesn't want any of his players picking up another foul. Oh, that rebound. The free throw shooter able to get his own rebound off a missed free throw, and it's going to stay with Wellesley and. As I said, barring an offensive rebound, Branch will get the final shot. And that's exactly what happened. An offensive rebound. And Wells is going to go right back into their bench. They want another shooter in. See if Branch can come up with another steal. Try and close out this half strong. Defense has been exceptional in this first half for the Wamps. So far, just allowing 14 points. Bones all over the point guard Weisel. Final 15 seconds. Nobody open for Wellesley. Good defense for Braintree. Another screen looking for their pick and roll. Nothing rolling the basket. Final five. Weisel inside and what a save wow. by Dutcher. Conboy looking to get the shot off. Timberlake will not get it off. And he was going to try and slam it down, he thought otherwise. What an effort there by Justin Dutcher at the end. I don't know how he kept that inbounds, diving to the floor. Excellent defense from the Wamps on their rotation. They gave up that offensive rebound off the free throw. But they did a nice job clamping down and take a 12-point lead into the half. So Wellesley able to produce 11 points in that second quarter versus the three in that first quarter. Braintree outscoring them 16-11 to 11 in that second quarter taking a 26 to 14 lead at half. We'll take a break as well. We'll be back for the second half.
Welcome back to the Hergen Gymnasium here, ready to start the third quarter. Mike Wassel and Jeff Poster on hand, and at halftime, the Womps with a 12-point advantage, 26 to 14. And Jeff, up and down first half for both sides. A much better second quarter for Wellesley, but still not good enough here today. Too many turnovers, and Braintree right now trying to take advantage of those mistakes. It'll be Braintree ball to start this second half. Some confusion, I think, here to start. The refs blew the whistle and then held up. But really, yeah, 12-point lead to start the second half. It should be a lot more the way Wellesley played. So many turnovers, and Braintree with a seven steals. Nice cut to the basket as Timberlake goes to the line. And you mentioned Braintree's had plenty of opportunity to extend this one. Probably should be close to the 20-point range where they should be leading. But when you let a team hang around and hang around, this is the kind of game that, unless Braintree cleans it up, you know, this this one may stay within grasp for the Raiders, but if Braintree comes out strong here in this second half as the first free throw is missed, I think this one could be over after three quarters. Oh, this, if they... this is the guy they got to get going. Timberlake, only four points in that first half. Two of them came late at the free throw line. He had a bucket early, but he's their go-to guy scoring-wise, and maybe that last free throw helped them out, just kind of seeing the ball go in the net. I think a difference between this game and a lot of the home games that they've had in the last couple weeks is they've been able to come up with the steals, but then they've been able to get out and transition. Here today, they really haven't been able to get the fast break going as we get another foul. I'm surprised at that call. I thought Gilbert shoved Timberlake, and then he was just kind of returning the favor. Well, Timberlake gets the second. Definitely don't want to see anybody get in foul trouble for the Womps. Mike Mahoney, who was very successful early on on both sides of the ball, got into some foul trouble. So hopefully he can regain the momentum he had early in the first half as he's back out there now to start the second. Good defense by Jones as Gilbert threw it off his leg, but I guess they called the timeout before, so it would have been their ball anyway. But 7-16 to go and another early timeout. We've seen this. The last couple games, we saw Weymouth take a timeout, was it 10 seconds into the first quarter? Last game, and another early I timeout. Even, I don't even know if it was 10 seconds into it. It might have even been quicker than that. Yeah, it's great to see your defense forcing a team into early timeouts. Granted, we're now into the third quarter, but you might come back, especially if Wellesley hangs around, that might come back to hurt you to have to use a timeout that early. We're not even a minute gone here in this third. I think this is where Braintree has an opportunity just to put this one away, finish this third quarter out strong, put yourself up by close to the 20 points, and this one's over after three. This is uh, Braintree's game to have, and coming out of this timeout, Wellesley knows that it's now or never for this team. If they don't get this one within five five or six points before the end of the third quarter, I think that Braintree's going to pretty much handily win this one. It's a tough hill to overcome. They always say that key number is 10 going into the fourth. That's where you at least want to be, but... Wellesley, the way they've been handling the ball and the turnovers they've committed, it's got to be closer than that. Like you said, five, six points maybe. So a 13-point lead as Weisel with the ball. Just five seconds on the shot clock. I don't know if they're aware. Here's Murray. He fires it up, and it's nowhere close. It was blocked. And Branchy comes down with some more good defense. Reddington sets it up. Getting the block there. Zeskis has played some pretty good minutes in that first half. Not much offensively, but very good defense. Gets the fake, and he gets the basket. Counted in one. <laughs> Smart play. We talked about it prior to the game. We talked about the up fake, how important it is. It was actually the JV game where it was a, a four-point game, and you, know, you need the foul plus the three-pointer, draw the up fake, and that's exactly what Zeskis was able to do. Wait for the contact, go up strong, finish at the rim. And now a chance for a three-point play. The discipline isn't a lot of times there at this level. Good move by Zeskis, who we had said struggled a bit with his offense just before he made that pump fake and drew the contact. Completes the three-point play, too. Maybe that gets him going. He was held scoreless in that first half. Had a lot of good looks at the basket, too. And Zeskis going to be called for the foul. That's going to send the Raiders to the line for two. Down by 16. Only his first, though. Well, 
First free throw is good. Moen's done a lot of his work at the line. Four of his five points have come from the free throw line. He misses the second, and the rebound taken down by Reddington. Looking for Jones underneath. The pass isn't there. Now Jones goes to the other side. 15 on the shot clock. Jones looking to go one-on-one. -on -one. Now looking to feed it inside to Mahoney. The entry pass is there. Zeskis with it. And nobody home. He threw know. it away. Who he was going to there. There was nobody in the area. Back to the top of the key. Murray steps in this time and it's no good. It was the one bright spot in that first half and another missed opportunity. A layup missed as Branch comes down with the rebounds. Jones able to control it. Now up top, Timberlake fakes it. Timberlake at the free throw line. No good. Rebound by Mahoney. Mahoney with the left hand. No good. Rebound Timberlake. A third chance, a fourth chance for Brancher to come down with it. And Jones does. Underneath, then he's slammed down as Jones goes down hard. Every time Jones goes to the ground, he goes down so hard. You gotta assume that those falls must really take a toll on you after a while. Plays such an aggressive game as now Braintree sends four players over to get some words from Coach Crook during the first free throw attempt, which is good. So first player in double figures with 10 is Marquise Jones. Over around that double-double area, he's got eight rebounds to go along with the 10 points. Mahoney is pretty close to stepping into the area in a lane violation. Almost a lane violation. So 11 now for Jones. Braintree extending the lead up by 17, largest lead of the game. We talked about this, if Braintree can get over 20 before the end of this third quarter, this is just about over. And another turnover. Head coach Mike Wright, he can't be happy. Timberlake to the basket, nice move. He and just, that's the man you want to see get going. Just floated through the lane. Seven now for Timberlake, the lead is 19. Got to have a basket here if you're the Raiders. This one's starting to get out of hand. Much better focused effort from this Braintree team coming out of halftime. Inside and nearly taken away by Reddington. Nice pass inside, Murray, no good. Second chance is good. So Max Guffrey getting his first, uh, his third point now. He had a free throw earlier in the first quarter. Now getting his second and third point with the basket. Four and a half to go as Jones back to the top of the key for Zeskis. Step inside the line and the shot's good. So Zeskis heating up here in the third quarter with five now. Right, just still with the press. Branchy starters really feeling it. They played well here in the beginning of the third quarter, and they're halfway gone. Ten points already with 4.15 to go for this Braintree team here in the third quarter. Back to the outside. White's so wide open for three, and the air mails it. Back outside. Step back three is also short. And Braintree commits the foul. That's going to get Dutcher back into the game. Back-to-back -back offensive boards for Guffrey. He's had some good awareness underneath to give the Raiders a couple of second, third chance opportunities on offense. That was the third against Mahoney. So Costello, Dutcher, and Convoy both, or all three of them, checked in. Zeskis, Reddington, and Mahoney out. Four minutes to go. Outside shot, no good. And three three-point opportunities on that possession. All go by the boards. Branchy with it now. Convoy looking inside for Timberlake. Nice pass. Dutcher fakes it. Strips. Timberlake, what a pass oh. inside. Costello takes the tougher shot, and he's short. Should have gone up with it right away. Right. And an injury timeout. As Moen looked like he may have rolled an ankle. That was a bullet of a pass from Timberlake. Branchy right now really hesitant from the outside. They haven't gotten their three-point shot. And they're, I mean, those are the shots that you want. I mean, that's that's a good look for Dutcher. You take that outside shot, Timberlake as well at the top of the key. One of your best scorers. You gotta take those shots, and I think that throws off somebody like Costello who's expecting the shot to go up. He's getting ready for a defensive or an offensive rebound. 
at the same time, I think the teams, they don't have a three yet tonight. They've recognized it might not just be falling, so they're trying to sh shy away from it and maybe go for the more high percentage shot. Frank's really low. not a three-point shooting team. Haven't really been all season. Definitely players in this team that can hit the outside shot. I mean, we've seen Conboy in the last couple games hit some. We've seen Timberlake. Reddington can hit the outside shot. We saw Costello earlier this season against Bridgewater Raynham with a three late to pull Branchy within two. But consistently, Branchy hasn't been able to shoot the outside shot this season as Branchy picks up their fifth team foul here in this third quarter. Going very small here as Carnes comes back into the game and Timberlake takes a seat. So Costello at the five. Jones all over. And a nice slash to the basket for two. Great cut. Tim Ray with his first two. That'll give you gray hairs as a coach. As Ray had a completely open lane to get, no one contested him. Jones throws it away. That was partially blocked. He was looking for Dutcher on the other side. Yeah, I think four black and red jerseys came over to stop him. Back-to-back -back baskets for Ray. Getting Wellesley back within striking distance, still down by 15. But they're gonna need a run. At some point, this Wellesley team has to make a run. They haven't made it all game long. It's either now or never for this team as Dutcher has it just inside of the arc. It starts with taking care of the ball, which they've done their last couple of possessions. That's way off. Tough shot from Jones, not a good shot. And that's gonna quickly bring Zeskis in. Three rebounds here for Barron, all in the second half. Here goes Ray again to the basket, and he's fouled. Tough assignment there for Carnes. This is on Conboy. Oh, they got Carnes. I saw Conboy reach in initially, and that's as soon as they made the whistle. But yeah, Carnes gives up a lot of size, almost no matter who he's on. Branchy takes the timeout. That's the second on Carnes, and Branchy's still up by 15. With 2.10 to go here in the third quarter. This just hasn't been pretty. Hasn't yeah. been a pretty game on either side. And even though Braintree has this big lead, it's it's been a work in progress here yeah, in this they, game. Yeah, they're not doing a very good job on the offensive end of the floor. Defense and has been good. Defense but has been very good. A lot of it aided by Wellesley's mental mistakes, not taking care of the ball, so many travels. But defense has been great with the steals. Braintree's gotten a lot of those and a handful of blocks to go along. They're letting Wellesley hang around. This is... Braintree's game to lose essentially right now. If they, you know, they still have a sizable lead, but you let Wellesley hang around, they're going to gain some confidence. They made a couple of baskets here in this third quarter. This is what they finish off. It's the best defense Braintree's played all season. Prior to this, I mean, right now, 21 points for Wellesley here with 2.10 to go. Right now, the season best was 35 points allowed to Dedham. So, Braintree right now on track for their best defensive effort of the season. But offensively, they're way behind their output. And the foul is going to be on Carnes. That's his third. Back-to-back -back fouls on back-to-back -back possessions. And that's the bonus already for Wellesley. That's crazy to think. The entire fourth quarter, they're going to spend at the line with any yep. foul. If they're smart, they'll attack Braintree in the paint and get to that free throw line. Doesn't say they're going to make them all, but, you know, puts them in a good position to make some free throws. Clock is stopped, which for them is not their friend. First free throw line drive is good. So it hasn't been the usual suspects that have really brought in this Wellesley team back. Alex Barron with his first. We saw Tim Ray, who didn't score in the first half. He has four points here in this quarter. As the second free throw is missed, taken down by Dutcher. And here comes the Womps. Back up front to Conboy inside now. Nice pass from Costello inside. Another pass from Conboy. Dutcher can't get the roll. Another player that can't find the bottom of the basket. He's had a lot of good opportunities, and that one just wouldn't stay down. Tree needs to play smart defense here the rest of the way. And now Wellesley's still attacking as they call a foul. Costello had that one tied up. 
I don't know about that call either. Four on Costello now. Seems like whenever Braintree gets a little bit of a run going, they get a foul trouble situation. In their own way. Yeah, Mahoney and Costello both in foul trouble. They start Carnes pick up his third here in this quarter. Just hard to get things going offensively when you have so many different pieces coming in. Free throw is no good, so Wellesley can't help themselves out. We talked about going to the free throw line, but if you can't make your free throws, it's not going to get you back into the game. Zeskis looking for the cut. Conboy was there. He goes back inside now for Mahoney. Up with the left hand, and he can't get it to fall. <laughs> he falls over in disappointment that he can't get that one, but let's look at the trip to the free throw line. That one wouldn't sit on top of the rim and drop in. It's kind of just barely hit the lip. Well, when he's been playing limited minutes due to the foul trouble, but Mahoney continues to be a go-to guy. He's been effective just purely because of his size. The 6'7 senior has been a question mark for Wellesley's defense. They can't seem to match up with him. Two nice free throws from Mahoney to put him at seven points. Here in the game, Braintree back up by 16, 38-22, 1.15 to go here in the third quarter. Braintree now looks like they're going to be in a zone defense. No more man-to-man -man with Braintree in foul trouble. Back off. And we haven't seen many threes on either side here in this game, so I guess you're going to live or die by this defense. Oh. What a play by Mahoney. Took that oh, one right away. Here comes Conboy in transition, up off the glass for two. And that's what we talked about, Jeff. Even though Braintree's created these steals, they haven't been able to get out in transition and run. First time that they've really had the opportunity, and there's the two for Conboy. Four points now for the junior. Inside, count the basket, and one. That's As an Barron easy call. gets two. Dutcher That's the just third. hacked at him. Third foul on, actually, the second on Dutcher. They had. Jones initially for his third, but the free throw good. Three-point play completed. Four points for Barron. Branchy still up by 15 here in the final 30 seconds. Eight-second differential will be shot and game clock. Back to the top of the key for Zeskis. Zeskis swings it. Reddington looking for Mahoney, posting up. Ten on the shot clock. Zeskis with a good look. He fakes it. Now he drives inside to the basket, up and in! Nice drive by Zeskis, seven in the quarter. Final 10 seconds cutting to the basket as Gilbert, wild shot, nowhere close. And Comboy's fouled from behind. Gilbert way out of control on that layup. Should have held up, he didn't have numbers. He was going one on three against the Wamps. And Mahoney kept his hands up. And made the mental mistake count. Get the regulars, the shooters back in here. Timberlake comes back in. All in the, you see Reddington in the corner, Conboy in the corner. Looking to go the other way. Let's see if Timberlake goes isolation to the basket. Swings at the Conboy here in the final five. They're going to have to do something. And they throw it away. I think Conboy was really aware that he only had a few seconds to work with. What can Wellesley do here in 1.3? Pretty much a heave to half court and hope for Unless they let it roll. a miracle. Braintree's going to contest it, that's for sure. going to go for the long pass. Crazy shot, and they throw it away. Kimberlake will get a shot off from half court, and he almost threw it down. <laughs> Close. That's the last thing you want to do is throw it away. I don't understand the you reasoning do, behind that. You do see at times at the end of the game, you see the ball thrown all the way down the court. And sometimes you throw it away, and then the ball comes back to where the ball was thrown because it was never touched. Yeah. And if it was in that case, they'd have the ball under their own basket. But not a smart turnover Gamble. There. Doesn't look like Wellesley got to the points they wanted to to have a chance there in the fourth quarter, but definitely still sticking in there. 17-point advantage for the Wamps after three. A much better start to this second half than they did in the first. Branchy leads 42-25 after three. We'll be back for the fourth quarter. We can't be stopped. We got the spirit. We're hot. We can't be stopped. We're going to beat them. 
and bust them. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. All those boys are much too much. Those boys. Welcome back. Fourth quarter. Mike Wassel and Jeff Poster on hand, and a 17-point advantage for the home team. The Wamps leading the Raiders. Talked about the magical number, Jeff. You want to get within 10 as the shot is no good. Offensive rebound taken down, and the shot's good. So that gets them back to within 15, but you said you wanted to be within 10 if you're head coach Ridey, and right now trailing by 15. You haven't been able to get anything going offensively here in the game. What do they need to do in order to get somehow stopped. get within this game? And there's one right there. Chase it down quick enough. Timberlake gets some speed. Defenders at the range. But the shot clock doesn't reset. Timberlake pulls up, and he can't get it to drop. And what a play by Mahoney to tip it away. Mahoney, uh, Timberlake to the basket, and he got fouled as he'll go to the line. It's been a lot of cuts down the middle of the paint. Both Jones, Timberlake. And Mahoney, all big factors getting to the free throw line. That's what Braintree does. They slash to the basket, they look for the fouls, and then you got to hit your free throws. So Overall, they've done a good job at that tonight. If that's how Braintree's going to play, that's what they're effective at. Well, you don't need to hit the outside shot. You, you do need an occasional three just to keep the defense honest, but another basket... Braintree can really extend this lead. So just one or two from the line for Timberlake, who now has eight. Wants are 13 of 18 from the line tonight. Good percentage. Pretty good. Best we've seen them this season. And that was Travel. a travel. I like the idea, but he started a little bit too far away. You can only pivot and turn so many times. So Gilbert was trying to literally step around the defender and get the easy two. And they caught him. We saw that from up here. And another mental mistake. And those are the mistakes you can't have, especially here in the fourth, down big. A few more baskets here, and Branch is going to be able to put this one away. As they go inside, Mahoney, he almost shuffled his feet. Goes up, can't finish. What a putback by Timberlake. He wanted to finish that one with a dunk, but had to be careful that he didn't offensive goaltend. Well, he's in double figures now at 10. It's Good defense, Mahoney. Hasn't been pretty, but he's done it. Nearly turned over as Conboy gets into the hand of Reddington. And that was a great defensive play by Mahoney. Reddington, he got fouled. Not a smart foul by Gilbert as Reddington was underneath the, pretty much under the basket. He wouldn't be able to get that one up towards the rim. He's laughing about it too. Saw the matchup, wanted to drive. And he's going to the free throw line. Smart play though. Reddington knows the situation, knows that Gilbert was not aware of where he was in terms of the basket. And now a good free throw shooter heads to the free throw line. So Reddington with his first point since the first quarter. Now with three in the game. Wamps also in the bonus now. One more free throw here from Reddington. And he can give Braintree a 20 point advantage. Timberlake. Looked like he was in the lane before that one was put yeah, up. Convoy, but a convoy either rather. Way, yeah. It definitely was. <laughs> nice block again. That's Mahoney. Mahoney has been everywhere in this game. Like I said, he's had some limited minutes due to the fouls, but his defense has been stellar when he's been able to play. Timberlake with the pull-up shot. You can't get it to drop. And Conboy can't chase down the rebound. Reddington pokes it from behind. Nice diving play on the court. What oh, Alex Barron here. Murray for three. It's good. His third tray. That's what he does. Nine points all on threes. But Alex Barron, he's been impressive. He's got four rebounds to go along with six points all in the second half and off the bench. Jones, isolation, pull up from the free throw line and no good. Nice offensive play from Mahoney. Wide open look from Conboy. Curry's the three. That should do it. Mahoney with a good save. Tomboy all alone. You're up 19 with five minutes left. That's a tough one to overcome. Tally up the assist there for Mahoney. 
And that's four fouls on Marquise. I think you just leave him in here. He fouls out, he fouls out. Braintree up by 19. And the free throw is no good, so Wellesley not helping themselves out again at the line. Five minutes to go in the game and a 19 point deficit as he misses both. Reddington brings it down and Timberlake goes one on one, goes to the left hand and is swatted away. White sold to the basket and it's good. Four points for Weisel. Actually just looking to kill off some clock now. Run some clock. It hasn't been pretty offensively. Just run those 30. Nice pass to Mahoney. Reddington finds the open man underneath. How do you leave the big man open? Yeah, especially the way he's played tonight. You can't leave him alone. But great move there all around the Braintree offense, moving the ball well. And Mahoney with the good positioning at the end. Long three is good. Nothing but net from Jackowitz. His first points. Stretch four out there. A little bit too late, though. Seen a couple threes here in this fourth, but you wonder where that was all game. I mean, they, they're starting to find the bottom of the basket, but they can't stop Braintree on the other side. Well, they've completely closed off the paint. You saw it again. Jones driving, and four of the five Wellesley defenders come over to shut off the lane to the basket altogether for Jones. Every time they do that... They're shutting it off, but they're fouling. Right. It's good. It's one thing to, to force the ball to be thrown to the outside or to get a turnover, but if you're sending somebody to the free throw line as Jones misses the first, it kind of does hurt you too. Like you said, I mean, yeah, the clock stops, but you still give a reason this still game, Braintree chance here. This game hasn't been as pretty as you thought or smooth maybe for Braintree's. They've had no easy layups. They've had to earn everything they've gotten. 12 now for Jones, and it's been a much better second half for this Braintree team. Certainly the output offensively has been much stronger. Nice active hands from Reddington. Zeskis has a wide open ahead. It's thrown that way. What a play from Reddington! <laughs> Reddington goes to the other side of the basket and puts it home. A little scoop reverse there from the point guard. That was fancy. You got the crowd, woke them up. Usually it's Timberlake who electrifies the crowd with his dunks, but that time it was the pretty move from Reddington, who has five points. And again, a turnover for Wellesley as Braintree leads by 19 with 3.22 to go. Braintree pretty much looks like they're going to bring in their bench here. Hasn't been pretty, but defensively, this is a game that you want to show film. They played All a season. Much, much better second half. Here's Dutcher for three. Still can't get it to drop, and Mahoney comes down with a rebound. He's using that length. Nice pass. What a play. Reddington to Dutcher, and he can't finish. Two nice passes, both Mahoney and Reddington unselfish. And Mahoney all, o all over the top for another rebound. Conboy inside to Mahoney. Why not feed the big man? Goes to the right hand. Pretty finish. That was textbook. Big man posting up in the paint. That's Turn dynamic. Around. Dynamic when you can finish with the both the left and the right, especially with the hook. Mahoney likes playing Wellesley. Air ball, and it's saved by Wellesley, but right into the hands of Reddington. Branch will run clock. They'll also get some subs in at the next whistle. Mahoney wants it. He wants it back. It's not a good pass. not a good pass that time. Wasn't the best seal either by Mahoney. Well, he's got a definite advantage. Throw it up to his higher arm. They went to his lower side. You gotta put it up where only he can get it. And a timeout by Wellesley. That'll get Braintree subs back into the game with 2.03 to go. And a well-deserved round of applause for this Braintree team who played a much better second half. They've scored 30 points already here in this second half, still with two minutes to go. Defensively, they've done their job as well. And it looks like their lowest 
output defensively will not stand. It was 35 against Dedham. Wellesley's at 35 right now. You would assume they're probably going to get at least one more point down the stretch here. You'd hope. <laughs> Well, at this point, things have happened. yeah. At this point, we really can't say one way or the other. But overall, I'd I'd say this is a much better focused Braintree team here in the second half. This is the Braintree team, the better team, the five and four team versus the four and six team. And this is Braintree's game to have. You looked at it on paper. You saw the two teams. You saw Braintree as dominant as they are at home. You said this is pretty much chalked up as a victory in the column. And, and these are the wins you need too, as we're in the. Basically, second half of the season now, approaching February. Braintree sitting on five wins coming in. Still need, still only halfway to the tournament. Offensive rebound, and there is the basket. 19-point lead for the Womps, 56-37. Shane McNeil into the game, pulling double duty tonight. Played the majority of the JV game before this one. He's a doubleheader for him today. Steel taken back, and here comes the Raiders. Too strong. And Braintree throws it away. Chorus into the game. Calm down. Chorus coming in, and he was a little too eager to get rid of that one. There's no rush here. Secure the ball, wait for them to maybe back off a step or two, kill some clock, and get a clean pass out. Braintree still in a zone. That might have been the tide of this game when Braintree went into that zone defense. They were in big time foul trouble. And it really shut down this Wellesley team as Bone comes down with the rebound, throws it off. Heads up play. Guffrey, and it'll be Braintree ball. 103 to go. Braintree will run some shot clock. Of course, with it at the top of the key. McNeil will take it. And he'll oh. make it. He wants some varsity points, too. Was doing it all in the JV game that, unfortunately, Braintree couldn't win. Just a sophomore. And here he is with the call-up. 22-point advantage. Sent to the corner. No good. Rebound taken down by McNeil. Braintree should slow it down. No real reason to go for any more points here. They could pretty much just hold for it. About a five-second differential between shot and game clock. As Quigley cuts the basket, throws it down low to Kokoris. Kokoris back to Quigley. Some of these and guys, Quigley back up top. They're playing for minutes. They want to show something. Here's McNeil, like McNeil again. again. A little bit off. Kynes comes down with it. Back to the top. And Quigley on the ground saves it. Wow. Just like that. I can't Bone play. Back to the top. Fancy footwork and almost turns it over. Won't matter anyway. The final whistle. <laughs> Braintree with the 59 to 37 victory here over Wellesley. And it was pretty much Braintree's game to have from the start. A 10-3 lead after one. They led by 12 after two. And Braintree ran away with this one in the second half. Leading score for the Womps with 12 was Marquise Jones. And followed behind quickly by Mahoney, who had 11. 10 for Timberlake. So a very well-balanced scoring attack for this Braintree team. And Wellesley really never had a chance in this one. They offensively just 14 points at halftime and really nothing to speak of offensively. The defense was okay, but Braintree's defense was the bigger factor here tonight. Yeah, Mike Mahoney especially, he had a great game. And again, limited time in that first half, but really was impressive in the second. And Braintree's offense woke up in the, in the second half too. Maybe a little pep talk from head coach Bob Crook there in the locker room at halftime. But Womps get the W that they need. They're now four wins away from a tournament qualifying year once again. So sky's the limit here with Braintree as long as they keep playing like they did in these last couple of home games. So Braintree improves to 6-4 and four with the victory. They have a tough road game against Natick. Then they face Chelmsford in a non-conference game before going on the road at Brookline before two big home games down the stretch, Framingham and Needham before the annual Sharon Tournament where Braintree's done well down the stretch in the season the last couple of years. So for the final time here, Braintree with a 59 to 37 victory. For John Orfanos, Jeff Poster, I'm Mike Wassel. We'll see you next time.